Welcome to the first episode of Working with PhotoEtch. This is going to be the basic primer and show you some of the very easy things to do with PhotoEtch. I'm going to show you how to prep the kit pieces, cut the PhotoEtch from the fret, prepare for lighting a model, attach the PhotoEtch, and apply some finishing details. We're going to be working with the Mobius Models Viper Mark II kit. It's a very simple and straightforward use of PhotoEtch for the first kit and you don't really need anything beyond your basic modeling skills. There are a few pieces with this kit that aren't appropriate for the beginning class, but we'll get into that a little bit later in one of the future episodes. The first thing you need to do is prep the kit parts. Basically, this just means getting rid of the raised surface detail in the cockpit. You can see all the lights and buttons and things like that. You can take this off however you'd like, either scribing off, filing, sanding, whatever. For the most part, you'll be filing it off, though occasionally you might need to use an X-Acto blade. Now you're ready to cut the etch from the fret. They make a lot of different tools for this, some scissors and things like that. I like the basics. A number 17 X-Acto knife blade and a glass cutting board. Don't use one of those rubber hobby cutting mats. You'll end up bending the photo etch. Now, you just uh, take your knife, plunk it down, and you go right through the material. You need a really sharp blade for this, so it's worth going out and spending a few dollars on a wet stone and some honing oil. You'll save a boatload of money over replacing the blade every few minutes. Just like cutting the plastic from trees, you're going to end up with a little bit of the um, attachment tab on there. So you're going to want to file it off. So use one of the random surface diamond files. You can either pay a boatload of money for the Tamiya one or buy a bunch of them for the same price from Harbor Freight. And just file along the direction of the photo etch. Don't go at right angles to it or else you'll probably end up bending it. Grab a pair of these nice little pliers if you're going to be doing a lot of photo etch. makes it really easy to hold it and it has a smooth surface so it won't crinkle anything. Of course for the lighting to come through you're going to have to cut some plastic out of the way. And this is really straightforward. All you need to do is place the photo etch down on the part, don't glue it yet, and mark out where the holes are. Once that's done, go back and expand on those holes a little bit because you're going to need some area to be able to fit the backlighting films into. To get the hole out, use whatever method you prefer. I like to go in where I've got the space and go in with my Dremel and then go finish up with an X-Acto knife and a file. You don't really need to get this all nice and perfect, but it does make things easier if it's smooth, so you can just drop the material in. You want to have a bit of a lip on the back side so that you've got some space to make almost like a picture frame to hold the backlighting film in place. Now, just attach the photo etch. I like to use these little grabbit sticks. They've got a little bit of wax on them so they can hold apart. They make it really easy to put things into position and life is, life is simple. So just take some super glue and put it on the part and then stick the photo etch in place. I like to use an old can top as a palette for the super glue and then use an old sewing needle as an applicator. Once the photo etch is in place, you're good to go. Now it's just time to apply the finishing details. I'm going to leave out the painting because you know how to do that and the decaling. This is what it looks like to begin with and we're just going to put the backlighting film in place. Just cut it out so it fits in place and I like to use the micro crystal clear because it dries well crystal clear and holds everything in place nice and tight. And here's what it looks like in the cockpit. 
Lou Del Mesa was kind enough to send us this photo of his wonderfully done up interior, and it's all ready for lights as well. Now that it's complete, you're ready to install the lighting, and there are lots of lighting kits available from lots of different manufacturers. I like Voodoo FX, and of course their system comes with full instructions. Coming up soon, we're going to show you how to bend photo etch, anneal it so that it can be uh, bent into all kinds of interesting shapes, and lots of other techniques for working with photo etch. Thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next episode.